is the Hip Hop Matrix Show. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. It's the Hip Hop Matrix Show with Jay Hall and DJ Academics. All I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. Let's get it. Once again, we are here. It's the Hip Hop Matrix Show. Myself, Jay Hall. This guy right here, DJ Academics. What's good, my brother? What's happening, homie? It's been a grip. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. You been MIA. <laughs> hey, know where I'm at. I'm everywhere. You ain't see, never there. See, you know what I mean. It you just went in the hiding. It ain't, it ain't like that. I you think know? you snitched on somebody. Well, and you, me, went, you went into protective custody yeah, yeah, or something. Me and, and Takashi, uh, man, we've been chilling. Yeah, you've been snitching. Yeah, he told me how to do it. He gave me the blueprint. He was like, yo, all you got to do is this X, Y, and Z. That's it. Yeah, he'll be out next. He'll be out. In November, <laughs> he, he coming home in a month. They say, "Yo, it's so many theories about him coming home soon." Man. Well, no, it's official. They said he was coming home sometime November. In November? Sometime really? November, yeah. I didn't know that because they, they're giving him time served because of his testimony. Wow, that's that's a fact. <laughs> he coming home in November. Yeah, he already got a record deal, another deal. I I, I didn't gave, know, I didn't know how true that was. Yeah, they gave him ten million two albums. I didn't know how true that was. Ten million two albums. It's true. I, how'd you find out? Like, who, who gave him the deal? Who, who gave him the deal? I mean, it was the, who he was already signed to. Mm. Wow, that's uh. Let me see. I'm looking at it right now. Well, I guess we'll look more into it later on. But I didn't know that. I ain't know about that. I don't know about that. Well, I guess he's not gonna go into uh, protective custody. If that's well, the case. Well, I mean, he can't go into. I mean, it's not protective custody. It's witness protection. Protective custody is in uh, jail. Okay. Witness protection is out of jail. Okay. So he can't go to witness protection. Well, he could, but I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm not saying. Well, he's saying, he, he's saying, well, Takashi has said he thinks once he gets out, all this snitching stuff will be forgotten. It'll be like, it'll it's a story, and then it's just going to run its course, and it'll be over with. He'll make a couple records, R. Kelly S, trapped in the closet, and we forget about everything. No, I mean, I, I, I believe him. I believe him. That's what I he thinks. That's no. what he sold to them, and he got ten million for it. No, I I, I believe him. Like <laughs> I I believe I don't I don't think that this era is going to care about him snitching. Mm. I don't. You make a you make a couple you make a couple records, and you're good. You think he can get away? You think he can pull R. Kelly off? What you mean? As in just yeah, just drop so many so much good music that we forget about everything else. He can drop bad music. I just don't be, I, I don't think people are going to care. I just I, he can drop good music. I mean, of course, if you drop good music, yes. To answer your question, yes. If he drop good music, nobody's going to care. Um, but if he drops bad music, nobody's going to care. Like it's, it's, I just don't think we're in an era of people going to care. Let's, let's be 100. Okay. The people mm -hmm. that he snitched on are people in Brooklyn that I don't know. You don't know it. He didn't snitch on like the mafia that's running the whole entire like West coast division. Yeah. He snitched on some street dudes. Yeah. I mean, but they, I mean, the world is smaller now social media cause everybody knows everybody now. So he can move to Cali, but ain't no East coast, West coast beef no more. Yeah, and, and, and to be one hundred, and to be one hundred with you, I if something was to happen to him, it would probably be some deranged fan who would feel like they need to do something more so than the actual people that he snitched on, mm. because it's always the people who ain't connected to the situation at all mm -hmm. that want to get some clout, quote unquote, and they see him and they just want to go out there and do something. But if he was rocking with security before. He's definitely gonna be rocking with security now. He gonna have a, he gonna have a nation with him this time. It's, it's, what? <laughs> it's no question about it, man. Like Farrakhan himself that. gonna be with him. Yeah, nothing about that. But he can't he ain't gonna be able to afford it for too much, too long though. That's that's kind of expensive. <laughs> no, security is expensive. But I mean, if 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 especially if, if you want the nation, they if, don't they don't come cheap. But if if he, if he got a ten million dollar deal and he's potentially. Can yeah. make more money. Yeah, one album is it's gonna be in Spanish and the other album has to be in English. Listen, it ain't gonna make no difference anyway because that's gonna be pretty much a part of the budget. That ten million might be part of the budget. They might already get their money. He may not have to technically pay them at all. Mm -hmm. The label might pay them to make sure they protect their investment. That might not come out his personal pocket. Cause they coming for your head. I mean, it might. But if he snitched on everybody, everybody in jail, who coming? <laughs> like, all you gotta do is stay out of Brooklyn. I mean, everybody that he snitched on got family and friends too. Yes, on that one, on that block radius. Yes, they do. Absolutely. Nah. Yeah, all that in that block radius. He go up in Beverly Hills. He was. He snitched on some people that had some connections outside of New York. 
are they gonna come to up to Beverly Hills? If he's up in Beverly Hills chilling, though, it, it's surrounded by three six mafia type security, six four, six nine. You said three six mafia type, type security. security. What you is a I mean? three six mafia type I mean, security? Like, you know what like, I'm six four six. Three six nine mafia weren't dudes. big dudes. I'm, I'm talking about like the mob figures. Like I'm talking about when, when three six was like twelve of them. Not when not when we knew the three. I'm talking about early three six when it was like twelve of them. Mm. Like if he rolling around with mafia dudes like with big dudes like that, man. And, I mean, I just don't think this, like I said, I just don't think this era cares. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't. All he got to do is stay out the block that he snitched on, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. But, and you know, hey, if he's going to be home for November, shout out to him. Happy holidays. I mean, he him. also brought up Jim Jones, Cardi B. He brought up a lot of people. Said they was in the bloods and stuff like that, so. Yeah, everybody got to go. You, you heard Nino Brown? He gave you the blueprint. I got a whole list of names. You know what I'm saying? I'm going down. It's going to yeah, take, take you know, a know, gang I'm, of people with as me. As much as we love the movie New Jack City, we forget Nino was like, for self at the end. Like yeah, he was, uh, it was Rayful Edmonds in the flesh. Yeah, I don't even know if you <laughs> consider Nino snitching, because Nino was telling on people who ain't had nothing to do with it. Like, you know, he, he literally just lied on somebody. <laughs> Yeah, so. the pretty guy from the bank. Right. Yeah, he, he's he's part of it. He, a, he's yeah, the king. They he, was, he's the king of they were, they were gonna kill my mother. I'm like, <laughs> we heard you mention your mother through the whole movie. All of a sudden, it's gonna kill his mother. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. That's what's up, though, man. But we, you know, we we've been gone for uh, a little second. They so talk about a reboot for that too. Yeah, we will get to that, man. We we've been going for a little second, so let's let's entertain, let people know exactly what we've had going on. What you been having? On? Popping with you. What's the announcements? Oh man, new club opening. I've been playing that. Guys opened it up. It's called Gold Room. It's on 8th Street in DC. They got the Gold Kitchen and they got some famous gold wings in there too. So if you are in the DC area, DMV as they say, PG County, Northern Virginia, District of Columbia, make sure you stop past 8th Street and check out Gold Room. How you like them? Gold, they, they're called Gold Wings? Yeah, Gold Wings. Actually, Gold. Really? The wings are actually gold, yes. I need to check that out. <laughs> I'm looking at your smile. I'm like, I ain't. That's, that's yeah. okay. And they got gold shrimp, too. 24K shrimp, too. Oh. Yeah. Okay. You going to holler at your man? You gotta, can I? Yeah. Okay. I got you. I got you. That's what's up. That's what's up. Anything else you got going on, bro? Yeah. World Series. <laughs> okay. Um. Also, let me let everybody know. Shout out to AURN Online. That's who I work with out in New York. We I have done a Howard University homecoming project that I can't wait for you guys to actually see. It was homecoming about a couple weeks ago. You know, it was a lot of work, but, you know, we're trying to capture the essence of HBCUs, and we start off with my Alamada Howard. And homecoming was dope, man. They were tripping about um, the tailgate. They put out this letter saying there was going to be, it had to be like a dry tailgate, like no alcohol, like a tailgate, no alcohol. Then they added an extra fence. So it kind of took away the spirit a little bit, but man, us because everybody was sober. <laughs> no, no, no. People got it in. The problem is people got it in, but there are certain people. Like here's the thing: I told people, I said, "Yo, that letter is to protect the university. There's no way they're gonna be able to monitor all. Yeah, they those can't stop all thousands those. of people. But you had certain people who didn't get a booth because they were like, the problem. What it was doing is, if you came in there, and you had already rented a booth. They were checking you, mm -hmm. and so it was becoming too much trouble. For example, if I got myself a booth, right, mm -hmm. and then I try to get you to come in, bring out. Alcohol. By the time you probably would get to me, you had to wait in line for like 30 minutes. Then you had to go find me. It was too much trouble. So a lot of people didn't even go through all that. Mm. So we just hung out, man. You know, but we still had a good time. Let's think about um, homecoming, man. It becomes a lot bigger than just what you think it is. Like you might be like, okay, cool. We gonna mess up this tailgate situation, but we'll find other parts to have our fun, which we did. Mm -hmm. It was, it was what's up, man. Um, also a big shout out. And it was different this year. It was a HBCU homecoming weekend this year. What you mean? Because it was it was Howard, it was Morgan, it was Bowie State, all in the same weekend. I don't think that's ever happened. Before. No, Bowie's had theirs in the same weekend before. I'm talking about all three, like all no, the they, they three had it, HBCUs. Yeah. You talking about the, it? Yeah, they, they, have, they, the, 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 the Bowie and Morgan has had their, um, they have had their homecoming the same weekend as ours before. Oh, well, it's it been a while. Had, it's been a while. It, this is the first. No, this is the first time you, 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 you noticed. Oh, okay. that's all. Uh -huh. I mean, shout out to them, but just, I mean, you it's know. It's the first time I cared. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, shout out to DJ Heat. She's a Morgan Tiger. You know what I'm saying? But that's me. And yeah. shout out to HBCUs all in general. But yeah, I mean, Joe Claire, you know. Yeah, y'all, but y'all know what it is. I mean, that's, I'm just saying, you know, y'all, you, you guys know what it is. And um, yeah. I went to Bowie for all of two months. Yeah, you know. Shout out yeah. to you. And that was the summertime, too. It, hey, wasn't, you, it wasn't the fall. It was summer. You went longer than most people. Um, <laughs> Never all, stepped in the classroom. It was like football practice throughout yeah. the summer, you know, workouts. and then Standard NCAA. And, and then, then once you get to the first day of school, oh, your credits didn't transfer. Oh, I'm back home. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Also, um, before I bring it to a um, – before it comes to a close, I also got to uh, give a big up to the fact that it is also Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I wrote an article for URN Online about the um, warnings of male breast cancer. 
And I did I did my research on that, man. There's a lot that I had learned about it. Because, you know, Beyonce's father... Had it. He he had it, quote unquote, right? Yeah, it's so it's much thing. more common than people think. Yeah, and it's here's the thing. It's also rare, but the problem is when men do get it, it actually can be more fatal because no one is checking for it. Even when you go to your doctor and you tell your doctor you got chest pains... Breast cancer ain't the first thing he's checking for. Yeah, and it's less tissue there. It's less tissue there. So by the time we find out, we at the stages that are that can be a little bit hazardous. So make sure you check out that article on AUR online. Also, big shout out to the organization, nonprofit organization I work with called Starting With Today. The Shape Up is gonna pop off November 16th. If you at Lee, if you in the DC area, Lee's barbershop, Dr. Lee, shout out to him out in Southeast Lee's barbershop is where we have our shape up. <laughs> As when we have a lot of conversations, a lot about mental health, mental awareness in our communities. Um, this one that's coming up, I think it's going to be more about music in our communities. And it's a real barbershop. We be in there, man, having discussions and having conversations. And people really be coming in and still getting their hair cut. It don't be like LeBron. And I'm like, <laughs> it was one dude, we was in there talking about something serious. And one dude came in there like, what y'all in here doing? Uh-huh. Like, just off the top, man. But it's organic, you know, it's Ooh. organic. So shout out to the founder and director, Miss Charlene Anderson. She pieced that together. Shout out to Tariq. Shout out to my man, Lawrence who's going to be hosting, my man Kaz. So, yeah, big shout out to that. November 16th, Lee's Barbershop. Go to Starting With Today on IG if you want more information, all right? All right, so let's let's kick off, man. What's, what's the first thing we got here, you know, on, on this list? Okay, let's, let's yeah, let's, let's get into it, man. So, Kanye, actually, um, by the time you guys are listening to this, it dropped. Uh, you and I, you were on your way over here when it dropped. Mm-hmm. Um, the Kanye West Jesus is King album. But before we actually tag into the album, he did an interview with Zane Lowe. Okay. And there's some things that he brought up that we need to kind of break down. All right. First of all, he asked everybody who was a collaborator on that Jesus is King album to not have premarital sex working while, on the album. Yeah, while they were working on the album. While they were working on the album. Let's 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 chop that down for a second. Let's let's Try to dissect that for a second. Like I guess that's how he was feeling. No, he's trying to be pure to the to, to the genre and the cause. I get it. So if you were working on that album, whatever the case may be, and he asked you to do that, would you? Yes. You would not have sex. I would. I would not. I mean, yeah, I would you not. Would not have I sex. I would not have sex. Doing I would the not. Process of the album. Doing the process of the album. I, w- I would respect it, especially okay. if I was working on something. I mean, it's a gospel album, so I mean, yeah, I get it. I get it. Okay. Okay. And that just says that he was actually is not. It just tells you that it's something that he really cares about, and he, it was something that he actually dove into a hundred percent. And it's something that he's wholehearted into, and not just you know a, a, um, a ploy or a gimmick or you know just something to just something different to just do to to sell more records. So that tells me that I mean he really in this moment. I mean, I can't say how he, who Kanye is going to be a year from now. I can't You can't say who Kanye is going to be a month from now. But in this moment, that it was honest. Okay. I can respect that. I think that is one of the most dumbest ish I have ever heard in my life, mm. yo. Like, me working on your album, you're going to tell me I can't have premarital sex. And you didn't have plenty of premarital sex. But he's married now, so it doesn't affect him, Kanye. Right. So now, again, so now you are taking something of a life that you live. So just because I'm not married, now you're going to sit here and try to tell me how to live my life in the process of making this album. But you're making my album. Yeah, but don't ask me that. Okay. Don't ask me to come into the... Yeah, but that's that's, that's a... That's, that's, a deal breaker. That's that's yeah yeah. You crossing the crossing but the, the way crossing he was the barrier, breaking it down. I'm asking you, but the way he was breaking it down, like, he had this epiphany in the middle of why they were working on the album. You were already working on the album. He uh-huh. like, hey, you know what? Well, that's different. I didn't I didn't know Jesus that. Jesus is telling me I don't want. I think you should stop having sex at this moment. Mm. And I still don't. I still you know I still have a thing about someone telling me what to do in my personal life when you hire me for a job. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, if you charge somebody in this capitalist society, it's a job. I don't care if it's about Jesus. I don't care if it's about Allah. Mm-hmm. I don't care if it's about anything spiritual. When you put a price tag on it, it's about business. So if you're hiring me about my business, I'm not a fan of somebody dictating to me what I do within my personal life, especially because you're already married. You know, good and well, you didn't wait to have sex with your wife before mm-hmm. you got married. Now, like, you know that. No one's going to wait well, to have sex with Kim. Well, I didn't say, well, he's not saying that. You, if you ever had premarital sex, because that's different. He's saying, could you refrain from it now while you're working on this album so you can have a clear, a pure heart and pure head from that standpoint, which I get and I understand. And if you're wanting to work, wanting the privilege of working on this album, which is mine, 
this is one of the things that you have to come out yeah, by, I, which is I, which I completely understand and I, I respect I, it. I, I see that, but, but I, I see your argument as well. I see yeah, your argument as well. I still see that. That's like somebody telling me I can't do certain things within my own personal space. It's not like I'm having sex in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bringing women around me. You know what I'm saying? And 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 to be honest with you, let's take a little bit deeper. That might be how I create. Y'all saw the Biggie movie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> what if that's how, what if I feel better? Well, I don't think that's what you need to do when you about to sing about the Lord. <laughs> You, you never know. You never know. What is the what is the quintessential difference though? You never know because we already are having this discussion about the fact that we're I mean, we're all sinners. Yeah, and we're including certain subjects that are quote unquote taboo and we're mixing them in with God anyway. Correct. So now you want me to be like What's that going to do with your app? So what if I go back to live? So let's say I follow that blueprint that you just told me, right? And then I go back immediately when the album is done, I'm starting to have sex. So what if the pureness messes up the album sales or the streams now? Like, what is, you think God really be like, hey, I want nobody having no sex or premium sex while you're talking about me. Like, come on, man. Like, especially like you said with Kanye, he changes his mind all the time. It's not like I'm working with Kirk Franklin. Like, if Kirk Franklin asked me that, I might. And I'm saying, Mike, I'll hear him out. Well, he's the one. He addicted to porn. Yeah, but Kurt has been, con- he's been consistent. I'm not talking about. And he got some sides. I'm not talking about that. What I'm he saying had is, some side. Well, he had a buffet. You're not hearing what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that if this, if you're an artist, like this is what you do. This is the lane you've been in for X amount of years. You just said Kanye changes his mind all the time. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to commit to something. And by the time I commit to it, my girl mad at me. And then you might have forgot what you didn't say because you just (laughs) want to go on the rant. That's what I'm talking about. And I'm saying people like Kirk Franklin or people like Fred Hammond, I'm not talking about their pure. I'm saying they've been making this type of music for a long time. So if they were to ask me that. They're consistent with the cause. Yeah, I'm saying if they were to ask me that, I would at least hear them out. I'm not saying I'll do what they said. I'll look at Kirk like, I don't mention everything you just said. Like, for real, son. Maybe if you was having sex more, you wouldn't be addicted to porn. I don't know what to tell you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'd be feeling the same way. I'm that's my only point when I'm saying that. So, you know, that was that was one thing he also brought up. The other thing that's been bringing up in the case of this whole Jesus is um King album is the whole argument about mixing God in with the songs. Cause the thing is, a lot of people really technically didn't know what kind of music it was gonna be. Because when he was doing the Sunday services, he was really just kind of performing old songs mm. and doing rants. And also just, you know, he'll perform Jesus Walks, but we didn't really know before an hour ago what this album was going to, you know, um, be about. And so people had a little argument or a little, um, there was some there was some gripe about it. And my thing is, you think that it's, it's impossible, a person should not make, they should intertwine what they call secular music with spiritual, non-secular music. I'll say this for those, for those people who um, have a problem with certain people making gospel music of certain people expressing themselves certain ways. It's like sometimes you got to speak my language to to talk to me. Like if mm. using analogies. If you speak English, okay, you're trying to save my life. Mm-hmm. But I speak Spanish. Mm. I can't understand what you're saying. Got you're it. telling me everything I need to know to save my life, but I just can't understand what you're saying cuz you can't get my attention. Mm-hmm. But if somebody's Spanish, comes along and speaks my language to me, I get it. Mm-hmm. And now I'm taking a run with it. Or I'll take it, I'll take it one step further. It's parents. Sometimes I'll take parents and coaches. All right. Say a kid, your parent tells you one thing, bop, 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 bop. You have a mental block in your head already set up. And it's for your parents. Like certain things, when they get to it, you're just gonna tune it out. It's gonna go in one end out the other. Right. And your football coach, he that's my guy. That's this coach, that's coach, blah, blah, blah. He that's my man. He'll go and say the same thing, and he'll take it and run with it. You got to speak my language. You got to get my attention before I can actually pay. You got to get my attention first before I listen to what you're saying. So sometimes, I even take it a step further. The army, you got to use different weapons to get to certain to get to certain assets or get to certain enemies or whatever. Because, like I said, you can't use a forty-five to sniper somebody. Correct. Right. You can't use a forty-five to sniper somebody. Like now, the the army's. Um, Weapons that they used in the 80s aren't the weapons that they use now. No, not at all. Absolutely not. So that's not going to work for this generation. The weapon y'all got on the street is the weapons they use in the 80s. <laughs> Abs- yeah, <laughs> right. absolutely. So I mean, I, I'll take take myself for instance. Like I rolled down and listened to the and listened to the um listen to the album and I listened to the whole thing straight through and it it had my attention straight through because he had my attention. So before we, but if I but what would Kurt Franklin do that for me? Probably not. Right. Would Fred, would uh, Donnie McClurkin do that for me? Probably not. 
So I, I'm, I'm with you in that scope as far as you guys speak my language. I, I totally understand what you're coming from because how many times, and you use football, how many times have we seen it where a coach was always able to get his team to the playoffs, second-round playoffs, conference playoffs, but they can never actually win it, right? And then another coach come in that – First year, and, get and that team go all the way and win. Uh, Tampa Bay with um, Tony Dungy. Go to State saying? Warriors. Go to State Warriors, right? Literally that first year, <laughs> right? But it's almost as if it's like it takes sometimes to take a new voice because you're right. Consciously, you already develop a certain type of defense against certain people based upon what you feel about them. Mm-hmm. So, for example, when you tell me, if a friend sent me a Donnie McClurkin track, because mm-hmm. I'm not a gospel fan, mm-hmm. and I grew up in Detroit where gospel was heavy, right? Mm-hmm. It's weird because in Detroit, it's like we like the most gangster-ish stuff that's, that pops off. And we also got the big, huge mega churches. And a, a good 80% of your gospel legends come from Detroit. The Wine Ends, Fred Hammond, all these individuals come from there, right? But for me, it was never my vibe, right? Mm-hmm. So if I see a link that come through my phone and this person say, yo, man, you need to hear this realist in the streets. And I see Fred Hammond, I'm going to be like, uh. Because I never felt anything spiritual coming from that type of music. When I was coming up, I really did feel something spiritual when DMX and Pac and Biggie were talking about it because and they it did was, the, and DMX did the prayer. It was but it was real. For me, I need real realism is important to because me. you related to it. You, that was someone that you identified that had some of the same struggles that you had and you saw him had those struggles so you see him as somebody like you so you understand where he's coming from. I'll be honest with you, it wasn't even so much about Yes, that helps. So I'm not going to, I don't want to act like re, re, uh, relatability doesn't count. For me, relatability is a cherry on top. Because I'll be honest with you, when Wu Tang first came out, I didn't know what them ninjas was talking about. You talking about speaking Spanish, all that peace guy, whatever. That that ain't my minute. I didn't know what, I didn't know what a 5%, I didn't know what none of that stuff was, right? So I, I had to grow into understanding what they were talking about. But to your point, what I would say is when somebody was speaking to me like that or with DMX, they were, to me, it's a realism that comes with you having sex one minute, but you or you shooting somebody one minute and then praying to God about another minute. Because to me, that's real life. Like there are real people I know that were going through that anxiety. When I saw some of the big homies on my block, and you know those dudes that were shootouts. Remember, some of those guys also went crazy. You know, mm-hmm. we don't talk about them enough, but some of them, quote unquote, had mental sickness, and that's PTSD and all of that. Yeah. So you can one minute be in the streets. But then you can also, especially if you came up in a Christian background in our neighborhoods, you can also feel guilty about that. Yeah, it's a are, it's a real balance it's and a, a real, real juggle. Exactly, it's a real juggle. So that's why with DMX and all of them, I felt that. So to come back around to that, I think Kanye is maybe the perfect person to have like a gospel album in that sense and to talk about and, those subjects. And there. also, also without Kanye making Jesus Walks, there is no Lecrae. There is a lot. There is not a lot of gospel rappers, which birthed the uh, Jesus walks. Yeah, birth, Jesus walks birthed the whole genre. That was the first gospel rap album that we heard. That well, was it wasn't an album. Good. It was just I'm a sorry, record. Sorry, it was just a record. That, you're right. That was the first gospel record album that we heard that was actually good. Because let's be honest, when we heard other Jesus records, they were corny. Yeah, they were really, really corny. And it turned you off. Anytime they, the only matter of fact, the only person who even rapped on a song that was gospel is when we heard Stunt by Salt. Mm-hmm. That was the closest. Mm-hmm. But anybody else who came up with it, they was like, yeah, oh, Jesus, throw your hands in the air. We were like, because anybody boring. else that came from that, came from that wave, came from, came from that culture that even thought about it would have talked itself out of it. Uh, Before Jesus walks is what I'm saying, and that birthed the whole that birthed the whole movement. Like I'm saying, you don't, you, I don't, I don't, I really don't believe you have a Lecrae who was amazing without Jesus walks. Uh, I'm gonna say I don't think you have a lot of them without DMX. I think I think Big and Pac threw mentions and they would say God help. That was step but, step one. That I, was that was throwing the seeds, I, I but Jesus like, walks kind of just flipped the table. Yeah, over. but X also. It's because X had profanity. X had songs that were strictly about God. That mm-hmm. was all about God. Yeah. They were more heavy about God than Jesus was, but it was the profanity. Mm-hmm. And they didn't play it on the radio, and it, it didn't become a chant record. Jesus Walks was a song that you can play on the radio. That's okay. the only difference. Okay, but there was also more civil rights leaders before, before Martin Luther King. Yeah, yeah. But I'm. Saying but he's that- the one that, that moved the needle. Yeah, he moved. He's the one. He was the he, face. He, he 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 was the face. That's what I'm saying. That's I mean, what Jesus go, walks for. But you okay? I'm I'm with you on that. I'm not I'm not disputing that. But I think there were a lot of rappers who also looked at X too. I think a lot of people looked at X and was like, "Yo," because remember X was actually I doing mean, prayers. Yeah, but this is this is, this is six years prior. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying I don't think I, my argument was I don't think X gets a, the props enough when it comes to bringing in 
breeding it, the, the artists that you talk about, I say I don't think X gets the props. I absolutely, think absolutely, because X, X was high just, as hell, and he was really going through things yeah. because he was going through, uh, what's what's it called? He was going through detox, and he was getting Manic high, and he was all that. present, PTSD. He was going through all these things, so you get a lot of real, genuine thoughts that come out, and that's what we got on those first two albums. Yeah, that's that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying Jesus Walk don't get the credit, and it didn't help breed some of those people, but I, think, but I also think, that a lot of people did look at X also too because mm-hmm. X was doing ten minute prayers mm-hmm. at the shows. You know what I'm saying? Like Thanks for me to suffer, for my brother to see the light, give me pain till I die. Yeah. Lord, just treat him right. I don't, I, you know, I don't think that it's a problem with mixing any of that. You know, with that, I, I don't, I don't think it's a problem with mixing. You know, the guy. I think the problem is is Kanye. I think my like my issue is I don't think there's a problem. Jesus always said in the book, it says, "Come as you are, speak to me as you are." Yeah, and I'm, it's honest, and it's honest. Yeah, I'm not tripping about that. I was tripping more about the fact that I don't really feel the energy around this album because I feel like I'm just tired of Kanye. Mm-hmm. Like, my personal rap is with Kanye. And it, listen, it take a lot for me. Me and you, we've been in this game for a minute. We've been able to detach a person's personal life versus their actual artistry for a long time. Kanye beat me senseless as far as and how I feel about him. His last couple albums were mediocre. You know what I'm saying? His rants. The things that he do, even the Sunday service stuff, when he was talking about, you know, Christians want to feel like this and rant. And, and on the side note, him coming to Howard, I just want to let everybody know uh-uh. we didn't we didn't know about that. All right, that, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be 100. Get us out, get me out of that. Okay, they actually, <laughs> no, I mean they they did they snuck it because it was a rumor that Friday night. I'll never forget. We I went to the um, old Howard Gala. Shout out to my class. And it was a rumor Friday night. One of my friends who worked at the radio station, HR, she put me to the side and she asked me. She was like, yo, you know about Kanye coming tomorrow? And I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, you ain't here. It's a rumor that he's coming. Yeah, I knew about it. I told, I, you, I told you. No, I'm talking about the night before I saw you. Oh, okay. She told me. She said, it's a rumor that he's coming tomorrow. I'm trying to see what's up. I said, I ain't know nothing about it. Then the next morning, that's when you and I saw each other and he had just did his thing. But none of us knew because alumni, it would have been a little bit more controversial Mm-hmm. If we would have known Kanye was coming, I can tell you that off the top because there was a lot of us that were not there. Mm-hmm. What you saw when you saw people in that video celebrating him and he showed up, those are people who you know how Howard is. They were already on the yard, just randomly but the out per, there. Right, but the perception of it is, oh man, Howard had, and I'm not saying he can't show up. What I'm saying is, there's a reason why they kept it on the wraps. Okay, that's all I'm saying. There's a reason why they kept it on the wraps because you were going to have an opposition to people who are going to be like, nah. And I'm saying right now, when it comes to Kanye, my feelings on him is just as, I just don't know, man, because you, he's been on this thing lately. And I don't know if I can really forgive this whole thing he's been on when it comes to um, Trump. You know, I don't know if I can forgive all the stuff that he didn't say and he doesn't read books. Shout out to Dr. Carr who said that if Kanye West is on campus, see him in his um, classroom because he got some books for him to read, The Miseducation of a Negro. Is one of them, mm. and unquote, and that's a real statement. Like some of the stuff that he said, man, it just stick with me, and I just ain't really been having an urgency of feeling his music. I would say I'm not saying I'm not gonna listen to it. Me and you listen to it, and we're gonna get into it. But I'm not saying I, I don't really feel like it was an urgency around it. So album. you haven't listened to it? No, I did. Oh, okay. I did. I just said, but you know how back in the day when Gay told you he was getting ready to drop, it was like. I was like, like everybody was like, I just don't feel that same energy. Right well, now. that's because the album was supposed to drop every Friday ago. for the past month. Okay, <laughs> yeah. And it was supposed to be called Yandy at first, remember? Yeah, but it was supposed to drop every Friday for the past month. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so for the past four weeks, it's supposed it's dropping Friday. That's true. And then Friday, it's dropping Friday. And this Friday, come, it's, come, it's dropping Friday. That's and true. this Friday, it actually dropped. That's true. Oh, that's real. That's real. That's real. All right, well, we're going we gonna to talk about the album, man, that we pay some bills, man. We got we got, we got a sponsorship. Shout out to them. We got a sponsor. That's right. Money, money. Go ahead, bro. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was my sponsor. Yeah. Shout out to um, Under Construction. Make sure you go ahead and follow them. IG, Twitter. They got a lot of nice sweatsuits. Kids wear. They had one is actually only comes in kids that I was kind of mad. It was a burgundy and gray sweatsuit. And I told them I need that. So they're going to have to go back to the drawing board and make that come in men's size medium. You know, I'm a big guy. So I need that extra medium for me. Thank you. Under Construction Clothing. Also, big ups to WalkingRobots.com. They were one of our first people that showed us some love. Make sure you go to their IG page, WalkingRobots.com. I need to ask them exactly what does Walking Robots mean. I kind of have my own interpretation, but I need to ask them exactly what what exactly does it mean. So make sure you check it out, WalkingRobots.com. Who in the hell left the gate open? <laughs> All right, so let's 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 get into it, man. Let's dissect this 
Jesus is Jesus is King album. So you you go for it. Now you listen to it around the time you was on your way here. I listened to it. I or, listened to the whole thing twice. Okay, so what I'm saying is, it's did, fresh. You, did you get it early or you literally was listening to it on your way here? On my twice? way here. Okay, cool, cool. All right. So break down to me how you feel about it off top. How I feel about it? I feel as though it's great music. I feel as though it was he put it together very nicely. It's different. He has the records where he spits on that, and he has the choir, the classic choir, but he put the production in there. I mean, it's Kanye. I mean, he is a genius. So, I mean, musical-wise, it's a, it's a well-put-together album. Great music. Great great work for me. I, I give him a... Give him a clap for that? Yeah, I, I, I give him. If we was mics, this is five mics for a gospel album. It's great. I'll be honest. So, I have a certain range of how I listen to albums. I think, you, I, think I, I like to work out with them. And, and I'm sorry, and, okay, and, okay. and I'm sorry. He um he also brought the clips on that. With well, his first time, we seen the clips on the same song. Two brothers on the same song in ten plus years. Mm. Ten plus years, the clips. And Malice had a crazy had a crazy verse. He only gave you like eight bars. He was he was in and out, but he meant it, and you felt it, and it was just that was different. So that was that was that caught me too. Having the clips on the record. Well, I think, I mean, he actually mentioned that. He said he didn't know how, in an interview, he said he didn't know how to do God rap. So he actually reached out to No Malice, mm -hmm. No Malice now, right? Because mm -hmm. remember, No Malice went through a spiritual journey himself. Yeah, that's time, why I, there ago. is no more clips because of that. Because he went he went left and Pusha stayed the course. Right. And that's that's what that happened. So to see them on the track, on the same song for the first time, and I don't know, and like I said, 10 some odd years mm -hmm. it was was crazy and then they went back to back too so it was it was good it was yeah um so yeah i like to i like to work out with my album i like to play my music in my car and play it in my headphones you know i didn't get a chance to do one i do the of, car ride because i ride from baltimore to dc all the time yeah i mean I, and I, I did i haven't done I i've only, actually i've only done one out of three let me be honest i was blasting it here on your way because you and i would text each other um so i don't think i can have a actual like um all around kind of analysis about the whole album, but from what I heard, from what I heard, the album is is, is pretty decent. Um, I didn't hear anything that made me like jump up. Maybe it was like a couple tracks. Um, I can't really name the clips. One did stick out to me. The clips did stick out to me because, like you said, I was more. I don't, but I don't know if I was more hyped about the fact that I haven't heard the clips on one album. I mean, on one song in a long time. Because mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you were more excited about the hype. Because mm -hmm. I was like, you, I was like, oh, is that Pusha and his brother? Like. I was more like that. So I don't know if I was more excited about that moment or why I actually liked the song. Um, it was both. <laughs> it was both for you? It was both. Man. Okay, like that's both. cool. That's cool. Um, the album itself, it, it it almost, I what I will say, it definitely is better than uh, the Ye album and the Kids Are Ghosts album because this one doesn't sound rushed. It does sound like he was taking his time with this one. It does sound like a, a album that, I, I'm, although I still don't know why he was so late with it. But it does sound like something he was really like working, but it just kind of really sound like him really trying to like prove a point. Um, he's mentioned a lot of things like um, Christians or the first person who's gonna be his, hip, you know, his critics and things of that nature. So it's okay. I think production wise, it sounds really good. You know, the way he incorporates some of the choruses and people singing on there and and the blends, it does sound like you are at a church. It does sound like a Sunday service. You know what I mean? And it makes you understand or feel that if uh, once this album warms up to people, then when he does do the next Sunday service, that one's going to be lit. Because he's actually going to have material to perform that people can actually sing along with and rock with. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a this going to be a BET special. <laughs> that's real. On Sunday. <laughs> On Sunday. On Sunday. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, that's what I think. I, I think that right now when I'm listening to it, I don't want to give it a grade. I'm gonna listen to it some more, and I'll make sure that I tweet about it. But right now, listen to it. That's that's just the energy that I get from First it. First listen, I'm giving it a a a off top. Yeah, I, I like that. Album. Here's a question though: You a DJ? Any songs you can play in the club? Yes, follow God. Okay. Um, definitely follow God. You probably squeeze that in, and um, cause that's the lyrical record. And that's probably the only one you play in the club. Follow God would be the one. I'll have to listen to it again. But off top, first first comes out of my head is Follow God. Okay. And would you try to squeeze some of those songs in the club? You Man, why not? Why not? I'm, I'm just asking. I, I, I would know. do it. I would do it. I could do one of the choir records at the end of the night. Where you know you traditionally do like your slow jam, man. You can take them to church at the end of the night before okay. they go home. Yeah, you might ruin some things though. Like imagine you and your and a girl yeah, here, and you about to go home and then X starts playing the gospel. And I take that back. I, I could play a lot of the records, and I tell you why. Because 
thing about being a DJ, it's not uh, what makes you a good DJ is not playing the best record uh, at the, at the height of the party. It's playing the most unpredictable record at the perfect time. Okay. So. I mean, but when you do that, though, you don't think you're going to ruin somebody's night? If you do it at the perfect time and you set it up just right, everything's all right. You know, I'm a little bit triggered by you saying that because real quick in college, I remember when Jesus Walks was hot. This was the one time when I had a girl over that I didn't have my own music playing, Mm -hmm. and I had MTV Jams playing, right? Mm -hmm. So MTV Jams was playing. Me and the girl get started, right? And we in it. I'm I'm in it. She in it, right? Uh, Jesus Walks comes on in the background. He messed up your stroke. Yeah, he messed up. Well, he he messed up her way. Cause she was like, uh, uh-uh, uh, I, I can't, I can't go no further. And I was like, you sure? She was like, nah. I was like, and I looked on, I looked, and I heard it. I was just like, man, I should not have had the TV on. <laughs> like I should, I should, I should have my own music playing. <laughs> should have had my own music playing. Or wow. well, maybe I should have, maybe I should have been in charge at this point. You know what I'm saying? It was, it just messed me all up. So yeah, so yeah, I'm going, I'm going to tweet more about it. So let's switch gears. We off the Kanye real quick, but we got to talk about this one thing that had popped up. I don't know if you saw it, but I'm just going to get real straight to the point. You got Tank was on Angela Yee's Lip Service podcast, and he made a statement that went viral. Now, the statement that he made, the reason why it caught everybody, he was really defending about liars, mm-hmm. right? That's how he got tripped up. Angela Yee, they were really arguing about people lying. Um, L'Oreal was saying that she dated somebody and that he lied to her twice, so he was a liar. And Tank was talking about how, well, that doesn't make him a liar. And then somehow, somebody <laughs> brought up, I think it was Angela Yee, well, that's like if you, if a man gives his head twice, is he gay? And then Tank, trying to defend his point, defended that, that whole thing. Cause Fell you, right into Because if you're going to go, you're going to go. Right. Your face. <laughs> if you're going to go, you're going to go. And so that moment went viral, and it, it made this whole movement about him saying, if you do... That twice, you're not gay. I mean, you're you're not gay, and so it caused a whole, you know, huge moment with the internet. You know what I mean? What was your take on that? What was my take on that? It was like you ever seen that little meme where it's like the model is like she's walking, and then she trips up a little bit, and her ankle goes all the way over in the heels, and then she tries yeah, yeah, to the save hill. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. She tries to save it, and it just gets even worse, and it just gets even worse. The more she tries to save it, and then she just bow. That was my take on that. That was it. That, that's exactly what happened. I, I saw the model walking, and then, boom, we went off the to the side, tried to save it. Uh-huh. Boom, tried to save it, and then it just got even worse. And he tried to save it a little more, and it was just like, bow. It's just to the point of return. You might as well should have just went to the floor from the jump. You you know you know. So when I saw it, the first thing I said to myself, you know how somebody can bring up a subject that's meaningful, but they're the wrong person to, ch- to defend it because they're they not knowledgeable of it. That's what I felt about it. You know, and when I heard Tank's interview later on, he he, he said, he said, don't ask, I don't know, because he was really just going hard about defending his point mm. that he got so caught up, but he's not that ver- it, he's not that deep into understanding what would make you not, what would make you is. And then he was more defending people who were having these homophobic comments in his comment section. And I do think it speaks to how fragile a lot of the egos are because you had people who wanted to, like, quote, unquote, cancel him because he made that statement. I mean, I, someone who is understanding of fluidity and, you know, by curious and doesn't make you, I'm not going to say whether or not if someone does something, we're just going to label. But I do think that if you bring that up around certain cultures, like, you know, especially in black culture, you can just tiptoe around the penis if you're a man. You're going to be gay. I mean, we, we throw the gay tag just about on everything. Yeah. I mean, where do you think the pause game came from? I mean, that came from being homophobic. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Right. <laughs> so you try to talk yourself out of doing, if a man does oral sex, like you said, that's the heel. That's the model. Yeah, that's, you know that's, I mean? that's, that's the model when she starts she just starts to lose it a little bit. Yeah. And then the more she tries to save it, the worse it gets. Yeah, because if you're not someone who understands that and you can't defend that and really articulate it, then you're that you're you're not only are you that model, but you ain't never gonna get back up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You're you like, broke you your ankle. Yeah, because you went from is, a sprain to a whole break and fracture. Right, because this is not your ministry right here. You know what I'm saying? That's what I was thinking when I saw a Tank. I'm like, yo, this this is not your ministry, bro. You know what I mean? Like, I don't necessarily, you Angela, know. Angela, you like, got him. Right, <laughs> right. I mean, because where that come from, right? Where you go from lying to, you know, or, you know, penis sucking. You know, where you go from that, you know? So, yeah. I mean, his album dropped today. So, you know, he might have some people buying it, you know what I mean, because of that. But, you know, that's that's, that's just what it is. So, yeah, I, I'm not, Um, I think a lot of times when we say things, you have to, like you said, you have to know what you're, 
T.I. made a good point years ago to any he said listen if somebody asks you a question in an interview and you don't know nothing about that subject do not answer do not give yourself a concern don't try to be smart he's like because you're only going to sound stupid <laughs> and more stupid and more stupid and more stupid and that's with any subject somebody asks you something you don't know nothing about move on all right that's that's what i say i just say move on um also then that was on the new i don't know if you caught this i saw this tweet in in live tweet but um I think Hip Hop DX or whatever had tweeted that Fat Joe years ago could have signed Eminem. And Fat Joe retweeted it and said, biggest mistake of his life. Mm. I think that was pretty honorable of Fats to kind of bring, you know, to admit that. Because Eminem apparently, I, and I saw him say this in an interview before, Eminem apparently gave him a demo and Fat didn't want to mess with him because he was white. Understandable. I mean, it's a stereotype, so understandable. You, especially back in that era. Yeah, I can understand why, how that happened. That's but you know what I mean. make it worse with Fat Joe? Because when Fat Joe came out, it was a whole opposition about him being Latin and rapping. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was a whole thing about, you know, what's this Latin people rapping? Like, they were just break dancers in hip hop. They weren't supposed to be necessarily like rapping. Mm-hmm. So, the fact that he turned around and did the same thing showed you that he didn't learn anything from that experience. <laughs> he learned now, yeah. but he ain't learned in that moment. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's still, Fat Joe's still doing good, but I mean, he oh, could be Fat doing Joe's a lot doing better. Yeah, he, he, he could be doing a lot better. But I actually think about that when you when you think about that, I think Dre was actually the perfect cosign and perfect match for Eminem because if M would have went to somebody else, they might not have been able to produce him as well and saw his sister humor. If he would have signed with Fat Joe, maybe Fat Joe would try to have him come out all hard. Like Dre understood to have him come out and show his sense of humor because that's how we was able to laugh at him being white and accept him. I if mean, he would have came out hard like them other white rappers before then, we wouldn't have believed him. We could say that now, but you never know. You never know. Yeah, that's real. I mean, if Joe still could have signed him and had Dre produce some records for him. Yeah, I, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so you know what? Erase everything I just said. Erase so, everything so I just said. So you never know. You never know. Yeah, erase everything I just said. Um, Lizzo, she also is counter suing two songwriters who claim that they wrote the lyrics to quote um, Truth Hurts. Mm. And um, she's taking that very serious. I bet she is. That's her biggest bag ever. Yeah. You know, you know, you don't want to get caught that's up like her, that. That's her Bodak Yellow. Because remember, um, remember Lauren Hill got caught up in that. I think she had to settle out of court with the miseducation because she didn't give, allegedly, she didn't give credit to people who had worked on that album with her. Mm. I don't know if it was just lyrics or production or whatever, but Lauren went through a lawsuit like that and she had to go, she had to battle for years. Lauren had battles for missing concerts. Well, I'm talking about this, <laughs> before, this is before that. Oh, I'm, talking okay. about, I'm talking about early when miseducation before dropped. Before she went crazy. Yeah, yeah. And cut like, all the hell. Yeah, like, like she was facing a lawsuit that she had to battle for a number of years, I think, before they settled out of court. Um, of her not giving credit to people. So, you know, Lizzo is only offensive. So you put you like this, you can't sit back and say, you can't think it's just going to go away. And like you said, true purse is too big of a bag for somebody for you to allow somebody else to come in and take it. It's, it's, just, it's just too big of a bag. Um, some other new music that dropped that's not Kanye is Akon dropped the album um, Akonda. Remember when people used to care when Akon dropped? Yeah. Ever since he dropped, he he bought that diamond mine. He been cool. So this is like his first real work since then. He bought a diamond mine. Yeah, he owns a diamond mine in Africa. I, I, I That's why that. he has so much money. Like, yeah. No, I didn't know that. I didn't yeah, know he I, bought a diamond. Yeah, mine. he been had a diamond mine. Are they blood diamonds? I mean, he says it's not, I mean, okay. he says it's not conflict diamonds, but um, but yeah, and that's why after when you saw that gap where it was like no more Akon, Akon just disappeared. But every time you seen him on TV or something. He looked like a, a million bucks. Mm-hmm. He got a diamond mine. I mean, I never, thought, <laughs> I never thought, even without knowing that he had a diamond mine, I never thought that Akon was necessarily like broke. I never thought that, but I didn't know he owned a diamond mine though. Yeah, yeah. I'm always seeing that meme that people created that saying that he um, gave a whole village electricity. Mm-hmm. And I never knew how true it was because <laughs> he got that cake. I mean, I never knew how true. Oh, that it's true. Story was. It's true. Oh, him because giving that whole village. In, um, yeah, it's, it's true because okay. he got the bread. I mean, if you got a dime mine, that's just what it is. And he and then and T Pain took off, so he made a yeah, lot of yeah, money yeah. off T Pain too. When you, uh, you know, he he was probably one of the few. I don't really have a lot of faith in a lot of artists who sign other artists, but Akon kind of like made me kind of go against that statement, not be so committed to that because you're right. T Pain did take off, and he didn't have to do so much after that. Yeah. So you know, big ups to him. Also, Dave East and Nas got a song called Godfather. Dave East was at Howard Home coming also too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Nas is actually the executive producer of his album. Well, he's kind of been his big homie for a little second, though, man. It's, it's, 
it's interesting to see what Dave E's career is because he's playing Method Man on the new, on the Wu Tang series. Yeah, Hulu. his new album comes out. If it's, is it out? No, it ain't. It comes out November eighth, I think. Okay, it's Survival. It's good to see. Yeah, Dave. I, had a, I had a nice sit down with him. You did? Mm-hmm. How was he? It was cool. It was real cool. Real cool. Actually, he spent a lot of time in Baltimore because he played basketball. He played basketball at Towson. He also played ball in Silver Spring. He's kind of was all over, even in Harlem. Yeah, he um went to he went to Richmond and then he played basketball at Towson. But um yeah, but he's all over the place. Yeah, but he's he's a real cool dude. So we we talked a lot about that. That's what's up. That's what you should have. You, you ain't like the perfect answer. person to play Method Man because I just what I didn't know was he was that tall. Like yeah, Me- and Method Man is tall. People forget Method is tall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't checked out the Wu Tang series yet. Have you? I haven't seen it yet. For the simple fact, I just haven't got the chance to, but I want to, and I can't wait to. Yeah, I need to borrow somebody's Hulu account. That's pretty much what my issue is. I need to borrow somebody's Hulu account. I'm just going to get on the fire stick. But. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> well, 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 well. <laughs> Jailbreak. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, also, the NBA season kicked off, man. That's right. You know, the Clippers smash, <sighs> smash the Lakers. Yeah, and then right after that, they smashed um, the Warriors as well. So, it's a new sheriff in town. What you think about the, you know, this is one of those first NBA seasons where it's pretty much open. What you think about that, though? You, who, do you think it's going to just go to the Lakers, or you think it's definitely going to go to the Clippers with Kawhi? It's, um, it's not, it's between the Clippers and the Lakers. I mean, it's going to be one of those. That's the Western Conference Final right there, Clippers-Lakers. Okay. All right, and then the Eastern Conference Final is going to be Philly and, Philly and Milwaukee. Okay. Who will make it out of that Final Four? I'll say Philly and Philly and LA. Okay. Philly and LA? <laughs> yeah, Philly and LA. Which LA? <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's two LA teams, bro. I know. You don't uh, know. But uh, but I'll say I go with the Lakers. Decision, I go with the Lakers. I go with the Lakers. Um, I think that if the Western Conference Finals is what you say it is, I think it's going to be the Clippers over the Lakers overall. I think the Clippers have more depth. Yeah. And Paul George wasn't even playing. That's what I'm saying. The Clippers got more depth. They, they have got, more they depth, they have a better coach. Better bench. But they got LeBron. I mean, but and LeBron look. can overcome two superstars. He can't overcome three or four of them, but he can overcome two superstars. I mean, the Houston. I mean, but I mean, the Western Conference. I mean, the Western Conference is going to be a hard conference anyway because I mean, even Houston, they not Houston they, is going to be Houston's what they gonna, have Houston's been. Houston's going to be a problem. Houston's definitely going to be a problem. Though. Houston's going to be what they have been, the third best team in the West for the past four years. I don't know, man. They 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 they'll be able. I can't put the Lakers over them right now. Honestly, just because they got Davis, they don't have. I would. You got to show. They got to show. I me. mean, uh, Tim uh, Rockets lost last night too. Okay, I mean, we only talking about the game. Just, I mean, the season just started. Okay, but I'm just saying, I'm putting, I'm putting, it's going. Clippers will probably have the best record. The Lakers probably Lakers will get it going. They'll come. They'll probably come in third or fourth. The Rockets will have a good record. I can't. Record. I just can't. But disres- I'm talking about as far as making it to that conference final. I can't disrespect the Rockets like that just because they got Anthony Davis and be like, oh, well, Lakers are going to be over Houston, like. I, I I'm thinking it's going to be Houston and Clippers in the Western Conference Finals, but that's just an early prediction for me. We both can be wrong. Okay. We both can be wrong. You know, ain't no telling. We both can be wrong. Also, or I could just be right. Yeah, it may possibly be possible. Yeah, listen, it, I'm not that committed to it because you know what team ain't going to the finals? The Detroit Pistons. So I'm not that committed to it. <laughs> this is, I'm, I'm fine. Um, also, real this quick. Is team in Detroit? See, don't stop. 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 Because Baltimore has a team <laughs> Right. Exactly. Well, it was stolen. You know, Go ahead. You want to move? They moved 45 minutes down the street. Yeah, yeah, okay. There you go. And changed the name yeah, yeah, yeah. to the All Wizards. Right. All right. All right. The Baltimore Bullet. Um, what's up with your team, the Eagles, man? Um, there's been some gripe about crossing wits. There's been people, some players whispering. Yeah. You feel a certain type of way about that? Is he yeah. still your guy? Orlando Skandrick just um, did an interview with um, Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp out and talking about outing um, – Malcolm Jenkins, somebody selfish play. If you wear the C on your chest, you got you to play the part. And My man, Malcolm came back, said, I could give two shits about <laughs> anybody not in this locker room. That's why we don't need mugs like that in this locker room. That's why he's gone. So, But I'm sure there's something going on. We just got to figure out that first half. Like we just, we just shoot ourselves in the foot in the first quarter every game. Like It's been like that. Like We keep digging too big of a hole that we just can't get out of. Anyway, I don't want to talk about them no more. I won't talk about them right now. I'm a bad, I'm a bad fan, but your, your, your Lions lost too, so yeah, that's because yeah. it's always us against the refs. Oh, yeah. it's us. It's I y'all. mean, Kirk Cousins had a, I mean, had a had a hell of a day. He had a hell of a day, so I mean, it's what it is. Well, let's talk about some winning. 
Okay. The Nationals is in the World Series. I was gonna get to that. Okay. The Mystics, the Mystics won the World, won won the championship. Yeah. 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 So it's a lot of winning going on in DC. Except and for then Redskins. and then Thursday night, the the Redskins got to bring everybody back down. To, <laughs> <laughs> bring, bring everybody back down a notch. I know everybody's doing a lot of winning around here, but y'all gotta realize. Yo. That is something to say. <laughs> um, shout out to the Washington Mystics because they won while we were off. Yeah. So let's not bypass that because our sister and friend of the show, DJ Heat, uh-huh. is the Washington Mystics DJ. She's the Wizards DJ too, yep. but we don't care about that. She's the Washington Wizards uh, Mystics DJ. And shout out Britt Waters. She's one of the hosts. That's the homie too. Shout out to her also as well, man. Shout out to her also. Win. Shout out to the Mystics. Because shout they, out to Cloud Nine. Yeah, they brought the chip home. Did they get a parade? Yeah, they got a parade. Okay, I didn't know. Seriously, I was really asking. I didn't know they yeah, got parade. It, it, I mean, of course, it's not going to be like if the Wizards won it, but it's getting there. It's getting there. It's getting okay. there. It's getting Shout there. out to them because that's the, they, they, you know, between the Caps and them, and now you got every team in D.C. Pretty well, much. If the, once, which I believe the Nationals will sweep this World Series. But um, once they do that, every team has won a championship in the past five years. You, you but the risk is. You know what that sounds like? Detroit. <laughs> and once upon a time, all of our teams had won a championship. All of our teams have won a championship except for our football team. Well, they won a championship and not Super Bowl, but Detroit. Like, most people were alive to see all of our major teams win a championship mm. except for football. Yeah, see mm. it. The Capitals won. The Mystics won. You know who's not happy about the Nationals, though? Or the Wizards. Oh, the Wizards. The Wizards bring it back to reality, too. Wizards ain't won, won, won nothing since the 70s. No, nah, they ain't. But you know who's not happy about the Nationals? Who, uh, Montreal? No, your man Bryce Harper. Oh, Bryce Harper? Yeah, because he could have stayed. Oh, yeah. Well, Montreal is not happy. The whole city of Montreal is not happy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because they were the Expos. They'll be all right. I don't think. I don't think. Kind of like how Cleveland was when Ravens came, and then four years later won the Super Bowl. Yeah, but that was four years. This one been about fifteen or about ten. The Nationals been around for about ten. They ain't been around for fifteen. It's been about the Nationals been around for about like ten. Um, what so? But yeah. yeah, the Ravens is worse though. The Ravens that was literally like four years. That was literally like a blueprint. Like, and we think about the coaching staff y'all had. Like y'all was set up to be a dynasty. Like yeah, that was that was a little bit different. I mean, well, Cleveland, not Baltimore. So yeah, that was set up to be different. Yeah, but Bryce Hall was definitely he looking real crazy. No, right you, now. he even went to the same division. Mm-hmm. And, you and said, didn't make the playoffs. Didn't make the playoffs. And your manager got fired. And you could have stayed. Man, you could have stayed. You know what I'm saying? Or and they bought the to California. You ain't have to hear that noise. You can hear that noise down the street. And they about to sweep it. Yeah, <laughs> they about to sweep they it. They not playing. <laughs> they pitching staff is not playing out here. They before. about to sweep and it. And they took out um, I can't pronounce his name. Jason Van Lander, the the co- the the pitcher for the Astros. I can't never pronounce his name. He's be he's be a tiger man. He's one of the best pitchers of all time. Verlander. But yeah, but the, they 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 did him something dirty though. They ain't care. So yeah, put yeah. up twelve on him. Yeah. The, all the sportscasters were saying this was gonna be a low scoring series, two one three two series. Nope. No sir. Nope. They bombs away. Yeah, bombs <laughs> away indeed, man. They are getting it in. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's what that's it with them. Um, also, um, big shout out to your man Drake. It was his birthday this past week. Also, hip hop legendary producer Alchemist. It was his birthday this past week. Rest in peace. Yep. No, Alchemist is live. Bro. Oh, I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. Who's the one? How you just go? It's another one. That name sound like nah, that. Nah, that nah. died. You go tip over that man. Make that. You gonna bury that man already? That nah. man's still walking around. I just killed him. Yeah. You know why? You probably thinking I'm gonna help you out. Alchemist did a lot of production for Mob Deep. That's not the reason why I said okay, it. It's, I a, it's another. To. I know, yeah, you, that was a good help. Okay. But um, it was a, it's another producer that, dang. Who that was passed it? away recently? That passed away with a name similar to Alchemist. Oh, well, no. Um, no. Uh, I'm sorry. Apologize, Alchemist. Re- live a long, prosperous life, my yeah, brother. Yeah, man, don't bury that man right now. Yeah. Um, also, this is the anniversary of two classic movies, man. Crush Groove. It came out back in 1985 this past week. Was that 34 years? It's your prep. says Keisha Groove. Yeah, I did. I, know I, t- I, I looked at that right now, and I'm like, what was I typing? Anyway, well, Crush Groove came out um, this past week back in 1985, man. I was pretty much, you can consider that like the first. There's, there were other rap movies, but that was like the first standard hip-hop movie where they got it right. Because technically, that's the story of Russell Simmons. Yeah, it was Def a Def Jam. Jam movie. Yeah, yeah Def Jam movie. It should have just been called Def Jam. It could have been. Yeah, it could have been. Literally, the only actor that was in there was Blair Underwood. I watched that recently on VH1. It was all everybody else was singers. Yeah, everybody else was rappers and singers. <laughs> Blair Underwood was the only rappers, actor. Rappers, singers, breakdancers, all that stuff. And that's it, man. Um, also, the best few drug man, dealers sprinkled here and there. Yeah, oh, yeah, most definitely. <laughs> and, and and shout out to L. Cool J because he had Nobody knew that back then. No, L. L. Cool J had the epic cameo. <laughs> and Jan Message J was about to shoot him. I, it, like it's all fresh in my brain because I literally just watched it about a month ago, and I was like, I forgot how gangster Jan Message J was because the first thing he did was go on his hand like he was about to shoot L. Cool J in the mm-hmm. movie. 
I was like, I wonder if he really have a gun on the set. I wonder. Um, also, The Best Man came out 20 years ago. The Best Man. The Best Man came out 20 years ago, man. Mm-hmm. You already know that's a classic. Nia Long. Who? Nia Long still looks great, though, too. She to does. This, to this day. To this day. Uh, also, before we get up out of here, got to give us um, show special love and much respect to the Honorable Congressman Elijah Cummings, who passed uh, away Baltimore, this week. Baltimore, Maryland. Baltimore's favorite son. Um, and I know you got more to say to me. Just let me just throw this in real quick. Um, I actually know somebody who worked for Elijah Cummings. Mm-hmm. And he was like somebody who helped them out in their career, like when they first moved to D.C. and they needed to work on Capitol Hill. He was such a great guy that when they left to go work somewhere else, it didn't work out. And they called Mr. Cummings back, and Mr. Cummings put them on payroll until they find another job. Mm. That's something that's not on paper, right? That's mm. not something that's going to be talked about. Them. Like, I mean, I witnessed that firsthand with somebody who was very important to me in my life, and he helped them out, like, tremendously. I mean, you don't have to do that. Somebody leave you, and you put them on payroll, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you don't want nothing from it, like... Just uh, and not to mention all the other small things I saw him do, mm-hmm. and knowing people like you and my other homeboy Dave, who didn't tell me how good of a man he was, and I met him, you know, just a, a couple times, real short. But you know, his death was really effect, um, really an effect on our movement and who we are. And he was always fighting for us, always fighting for us, man. So I just, you know, much love to his family, uh, much love to the people that knew him best. Um, and he has all the respect, you know, and he's he's above us now, literally, you know, so he has all my respect. You? Absolutely, absolutely. His um, efforts and work that he's done for the city of Baltimore will never be forgotten. Rest in peace, Elijah Cummings. Did you know, did you ever get a chance to meet him when you was coming up? I met him once or twice, mm-hmm. I believe, like quick in and outs. Okay. Right, how you doing? Boom. What was the res- so I can't really say that I met him really. What was the respect <laughs> caliber? Would you say he had in the city? I mean, of course. I mean, he's Elijah Cummings. Everybody know him. Everybody know what he did. Put the programs in the city, the power centers, all types of things like that. So that, it just goes without saying. Yeah, from my understanding, man, he was really about like if you didn't approach him about how you can help all the kids in Baltimore, like he wouldn't hear you. Mm-hmm. From my understanding, right? Yeah, but that's interesting um, because when Trump dissed Baltimore. You know, it was pretty much out of anger for his anger for Elijah Cummings, who uh-huh. was going at him. You of know, because I mean? Trump course. ain't been in no Baltimore chilling like that. He did come a couple weeks ago, well, a month ago. Well, I'm talking about that. And we had a, we had a big right. blow up rat. Oh, for real? Yeah, we we blew up a big rat and um made it put the Trump toupee on it, made mm-hmm. it dressed it up like Trump and everything. Yeah, it was all over the news. Could you say that Cummings his his just real quick? Can you say his impact was? Probably bigger than any mayor, or as far as as far as representing Baltimore, any mayor or any president, as far as in the city. Of I won't say that, but it was big. Okay, it was big. I like Kurt Schmoke, but um, it was big. Okay, but his his definitely now his legend has been. Yeah, elevated. it's up there. It's up there. Though. Yeah, up there. definitely up there. And that's not a smite to no one else. Yeah. I'm just trying to get people who didn't who who don't who's not from the area who didn't know. Uh-huh. That's all I was just asking. So. Yeah, so, yeah, um, much love to him. Also, are, have you been catching, before we close out, have you been catching the ending of Power? Of course. Okay, how you how you feel about it so far? Because we got one episode left until they go to the mid-season finale. finale. But and how you skip feel- the week on us. Yeah, that's with Comcast and 50 is beefing. I, I, I don't know. That's, that's rich people's problems. <laughs> how do you feel? Millionaires about, and billionaires right, arguing. Right, 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 right. <laughs> millionaires I'm, arguing with billionaires. How do you feel about this season so far? How do you feel about this season so far? I feel great about it. It's, it's been ups and downs, and you don't know who's going to die, when they're going to die, but you know who you want to die, and then that person just seems to live. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the you, best way to say it. Did you see that tweet Charlemagne put out when he said Power was the only show where he wish all the black he don't root for the black people he yeah. wishes he wishes for Tommy? Yeah, he's, he's the real hopeless romantic. Yeah, when um when La La, even though he killed his first one, but he was you know yeah it happened. But. When when La La um died when her character Keisha died, what what you what you think about that? I know what I thought. What you think about that? I was like, man. First, you couldn't tell who shot who at first because both of them had the same reaction, the same. Thing. Oh, when the gun, when the first gun went off, okay, when, yeah, when yeah, the gun yeah. went off, you ain't know who got who hit who. Mm-hmm. It was because it was the gun was seen. It was just they was tussling and it just goes off, and then you just see it, and then she's like, "What the cash? What about cash?" And she's like, "I just got an injury." Yo, let me tell you something. We always knew that Tasha was from the streets. Like we always knew it, but how quick she shot 
Keisha and that head. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't know they were going to be that graphic. I, I You know, because usually when they do something like that in a television show and they kill off a character like that, we don't necessarily see it like that because mm-hmm. the character, they, I guess the show usually understands how emotional this thing is going to be, right? So when they, usually when the character like that die, you just see the hand and then, you know, man, her head snapped back like that. I was like, and Tasha didn't even blink. I'm looking at Tasha like, yo, we can have mass spin off with Tasha, yo, because mm-hmm. Tasha was more cold-blooded than Ghost. I, we had never seen Tasha kill nobody on the show, have we? Mm. Am I tripping? As far as seeing Tasha kill somebody. That was our first time, right? Well, we've seen her hold it down in the, in the interrogation Oh, she, she's, no, there's no question. Tasha definitely has held it down. But we have not seen her kill somebody is what I'm, that's all I'm saying, right? Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. Yeah, that was epic, man. That was that was that was crazy. Um, it's a long way from three LW. Yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> I think that's probably why she was able to play that role so much. She imagined it was somebody else. <laughs> I think she's still harboring some feelings. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, they left out the cheetah girl. Right, right. She looked at there and was like, "Is that a cheetah bag you wearing, Lala?" <laughs> Uh, Lala also has some comments to say about people who say she can't act. Like, why they not getting the roles I'm getting and stuff like that. Well, I mean, I can answer that question. They not looking like you, and they ain't not Lala. They wasn't on TV and radio for ten years before they started acting. But she's actually good. You think she's a good actor? Uh, she played. I like Keisha. I like Keisha. She grew into it and made it, and she's getting a lot better. I think what it was is that Lala is not that great of an actress, and we already did not like Keisha. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I don't think she sucked. Cause there are a lot of people who sucked, right? But I think that when there's a character you don't like, because listen, Keisha was going to go snitch somehow anyway, anyway. She just couldn't hold the pressure. Because all you had to do was threaten her son, and it was a wrap. So you already didn't like her character because her character wanted to be Tasha so bad, Mm -hmm. you know. And when she finally got a chance to be that, she couldn't hold up her end. But added by the fact that Lala is not, you know, not the best actress. <laughs> it kind of make, and I'm not saying it because I'm scared. I mean, I don't. I like again. I think there's a lot of actors who suck. Mm-hmm. I just don't think that Lala is is great. But I wasn't really checking for Lala when I watched Power. I wasn't checking for Lala like that. Besides when she got naked. Whoa. I mean, I, I'm saying originally when I was watching Power, mm-hmm. I was like. When she was doing the sex scene, it was, you know, remember the whole quote, Lala's Tata's, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, that's what everybody was looking at. Because me having a crush on Lala, like any other man, I wanted to see that. But then later on, as her character started to develop, you started to understand that Keisha really, like, you know, played, like you said, an important role. Because I didn't know her and Tommy were going to grow like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I had no idea Tommy was going to love. I, I kept thinking Tommy was going to kill her any minute. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what I thought. I thought Tommy was going to kill. But I guess they ain't want the white man killing the black girl, though. I think I, I feel that way too. I feel like Courtney Kemp, who's in charge of the show, she wasn't gonna have the white man kill the black woman. I just he couldn't kill both his girlfriends back to back. But see, when he killed Holly, we all hated Holly. <laughs> like everybody hated Holly. Like no one. That was the best death ever. Every I don't know no one who wanted Holly alive. <laughs> Nobody. So you know, shout out to that man. But shout out to Fifty for doing what he's doing, man. Uh, you know, I just wish Tyreek could die. <laughs> Give me Tyreek's death, and I think Power should win an Emmy. Wow. All right, man. That, I think we about cover everything, man. It was good to be back on, man. After a while, man. That's we, right. You know, I mean, we had our little, you know, we had our mid season finale. <laughs> you, know you know, we had our mid season finale. We was out. Um, what you got a plan, bro? Uh, about to go broadcast on um, PGC from the World Series too. About to go do end the bullpen and um, you know, turn up with the fans. Right in front of the stadium is where you about to be. You yeah. about to be in the middle of the chaos. In the middle of all the chaos. Yo, Bring that's going to be crazy, my brother. Yes, sir. You enjoy that. I might come rock with you. All right, pull up. I might. I'm going. I'm, well, you can't pull up. You got to walk up because that's. It's oh yeah, 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 yeah. They already. They, I just well, as I was driving past, I seen like 20 cars get towed. Yeah. Oh, for real? It's, it's a tow truck heaven right now. They pull. They t- you can't park in like. A three block radius of the stadium. Are you serious? They're you... towing everything. Like all that around where the station at is. Some where I used to park with. Yeah, <laughs> all that. Are they you just... serious? They just come. Whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah, that's not. Tow truck's getting paid right now because they is getting everybody. Yeah, that's not pretty at all. Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I can understand that though. Fortunate for me, I ain't got to worry about that situation. Yeah, yeah. You came in clutch with that visitors pass. Hey man, I got you, baby. I got you. Not <laughs> wrong. Listen, anytime, my brother. Anytime, anytime. <laughs> um, make sure you check out some of my work on AURN online. Shout out to them. Also, make sure you yeah, check out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> make sure you check out Walks and Choose Bubblegum. I just put up a recent post. Um, it's called Rites of Passage. The first time I went to jail. You can read about that. My first time going to jail. And my first time going to jail was in D.C. jail. So read about that story on walksandchoosebubblegum.com. Also, follow my man right here at DJ Academics. Follow Hip Hop Make the Show at WHMS98. Follow myself at J Radio. As usual, be blessed, but successful, and we'll talk to you soon.
We ghost. It's the Hip Hop Matrix Show.